Hello guys, welcome back. This is the third video in the 30 days of Databricks series. In the first video, I explained you what is Databricks normally, introduction to Databricks. Second one was account creation and community cloud Databricks UI walkthrough. And now let's go and create the cluster. What is cluster? Let's say that you are completely new and you don't know what is cluster. So what do you do? You need to go to Databricks website and source what is cluster and all the different things, right? But that's what I said AI can be a useful tool, right? What I did here, what is cluster in Databricks, right? That's the normal question I asked in Perplexity. And by the way, this is a really good tool. I always go with Perplexity rather than ChatGPT because it provides you the different resources also and provides you the latest information, right? As you can see here, it gets information from different sources. So what is cluster? A cluster in Databricks is a set of computation resources and configurations on which you run data engineering, data science, data analytics, workload such as ETL pipelines, streaming analytics, ad hoc analytics and machine learnings, right? And it provides different resources. As you can see here, the first resource is clusters Databricks on AWS that it takes from the Databricks website itself. And the second one is type of cluster in Databricks. If you want to know what are the different types of clusters, I'm not going to go through now these different types of clusters because in Databricks community edition, we cannot choose the cluster that we want to use, right? But later on when we upgrade our Databricks or the Databricks environment, I will show you what are the different clusters that you can use. Overall, right? That's what we want to go. Overall, clusters are an essential component of Databricks as they provide the computation resources and configurations necessary to run data engineering, data science and data analytics workload. Now, I hope it is clear for you what is cluster, right? Without cluster, we cannot mainly do anything in Databricks. Let's say the computational kind of things. Of course, you can go through and create notebook and all the different things. But in order to run those, you need clusters. Let, let's put that way. Now, if I go to the community edition, there is a thing called compute here, right? There is no cluster. There is a compute. If you go to the compute, here it says compute. And there is the create compute, there is job compute, there is nothing here, but you need to go with the all purpose compute in the community edition. And you can go here and say create compute. If I click this, it will take us to this UI where it says new compute. And here it says zero workers, zero GB of memory, zero course, zero DBU. So what is DBU? If you click here, it says a Databricks unit. That's how it works in Databricks. DBU is a unit of processing capability per hour, right? If you want to learn more, you can just click this link. It will take you to Databricks pricing page. From here, you will see what is DBU and what is the pricing strategy in Databricks, right? But here it says one driver. We don't have workers here, but we have drivers. 15.3 GB of memory, two cores is being provided for us free from Databricks, right? So you can give the compute name, meaning the cluster name, right? I will just give here YT or I can just give here 30 days of Databricks, right? And here Databricks runtime, that's what you can choose. What is runtime? It says here, selects the image that will be used to create the cluster for detail about specific images. See the documentation again. So if you click this link, it will take us to Databricks runtime release notes. And here you can see all the different things when it is released and what is the end of support date and all the different things, right? That's all from there. We don't need to worry about that right now. But from here, you can choose different things. That's what we can choose. We cannot choose the, the computation resources, but you, we can choose the Databricks runtime version because some of the applications you need to use certain runtime. And yeah, that, that's the point, right? So this is the standard one. There is 13.3 LTS and you can choose whichever you want, but I suggest you to go with the latest one. So this is the latest one, but you can even go with the machine learning ML. Why ML? Because as 
okay let's let's explain this now you don't need to uh, install important packages because they are installed automatically when you create the cluster that's the good part of databricks you don't need to create the virtual environment here i will show you how you can install packages in the notebook or in the cluster later in the series but if you choose machine learning machine learning related main packages are already being installed automatically for you that's why we have machine learning and different machine learning versions right and here is the standard now let's just go with the standard so i will choose 13.3 lts instance that's what we call right so free 15 gb memory as a community edition user your compute will automatically terminate after an ideal period of 1 or 2 hours for more configuration options there is the link you can go there please upgrade your databricks subscription as i said you before because when you have your main subscription or upgraded version of databricks subscription you can provide the time after how much time you want to terminate your cluster but here we cannot do that it is done automatically from the databricks for us so there are different links you can go if you want to know in depth details what are the different things but i don't suggest you to jump into that detection right now if you are completely new please follow along with me i will explain you all the different things what you need to follow right and there is this instance there is this spark for right now we don't need to even consider this just leave it as it is and if you click this create compute it is going to take some time as you can see here once i click that create compute it shows us the different ui right so here databricks runtime version driver type so it shows us what is the driver type and this this is what it was there before also and here it automatically chooses us us ways to see now you know what it is doing here right i said you that it will be using some cloud providers under the hood right but we are using the community edition we are not using the paid version of databricks if we have used the paid version we it the the availability zone would be the one that we provide databricks to choose but now it chooses automatically here it says cluster availability zone the instance type you want may only be available in certain availability zones spot pricing the cost of spot instances can vary okay this is different information we don't need to care about this now in the databricks community edition it's nothing here because we haven't created and libraries event log all the different things it will pop up once we go and start working and this also depends upon the community edition as well as the paid version so yeah we will we will go one by one and see what are the different things so it is going to take some time and once this is done it will turn green so that we can use that cluster into the notebooks that's how it works in the next video i will show you how you can create a notebook and attach the cluster and also how you can terminate the cluster in different ways there are different ways how you can terminate the cluster by yourself you don't need to wait databricks to terminate your cluster thank you for watching and see you in the next video